This episode is brought to you by America's Rehab Campus. Get on the road to recovery with the best rehab in beautiful Arizona. Dial 1-833-272-7342. That's 1-833-ARC-REHAB. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to The Three Thank you guys again for tuning in to the Rcast. My name is Buddha. I'm here in the studio today. I got to give you guys a little bit of a background, a little bit of a story. So a couple weeks ago, I put out a uh, almost like a casting call on social media for anybody who's, you know, either they're in recovery, they've dealt with, you know, suicidal ideations, um, depression, anxiety, anything related around behavioral mental health and you know if if you have a story you got a testimony you got something powerful that we can record and hopefully help save somebody's life out there that's what it's all about and uh, i want to give a huge shout out to my homegirl jamie vanessa and her husband alex you guys are family man i I appreciate you sharing the post and i ended up getting uh reached out to by a homeboy named anthony palo and he's here in the studio with me today so everyone go ahead and give it up to my boy anthony we got him in the studio right now we're going to chop it up. Hey, bro. First of all, you know, Alex and Jamie, those are my people right there. How do, oh, how do, yeah. how do you know Alex and Jamie, dog? Hey, big dog. This goes way back from back in the day when she was modeling and all that. You know what I mean? Okay. Like yeah. everybody else, a fan, this, that, and the other. Like, you know what I mean? And I came across and bought a lot of her merchandise. Yeah. And, and little by little got to know who she was and all that. You know what I mean? And... Getting to know who she was, and then later on, you know, her homegirl, Vero. I'm not sure if you knew Vero. I, I think I know Vero. Uh, those two go hand in hand, man. They're like two peas in a pod. Is she the one that she pushed into that that, that thing? At- <laughs> yeah, homie. Yeah, yeah, exactly, brother. You know what I mean? I love so, that video. It, it was always the, the comedic thing that they had so that I always, like, you know, like, kept in touch and all that. You know what I mean? That's cool, man. And Alex is such a stand-up dude, too, bro. Back when I was making music, bro, he would always help me out, give me shows and stuff like that. Oh, cool homie. Cool Alex, dude. brother, I've, I've never come across anybody. When you say that you're your wife's number one fan, homie, Alex is, is Jamie's number one fan. Homie. Absolutely. To not have no jealousy, to hype her up, to whatever, homie. So when, when I finally, like, met Alex, I was like, you guys are, 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 are a perfect example for your guys' age. Yep. To see what it's all about, man. Because you got to be each other's best friends, man. Each other's everything. And them two, they are. That's real. Alex and Jamie, if you're listening to this, bro, we have not been to Bamboo Terrace in a while. We need to go get some Chinese food. Dog. I'm ready. Yeah, you had me out of food, so I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, man. Well, you know, thank you so much for blessing us and coming into the studio today, dog. For real, I... um. You know, I know you had told me a lot of the struggles and things that you had experienced. Are you in recovery at all? Have you ever dealt with substances, anything like that? The only thing that I've ever been in recovery, man, is like I said, when I've been in the suicide and depression hospital, brother, you know, when yeah. I was way back then. And, and that's not really like, a, a, it's a recovery, homie, but that's something you can never get past. You yeah. have a lot of addicts that are like, you know, I'm ex-addicts. There really is, to me, there really, really is no such thing, brother, you know what I mean, of yeah. an ex, because even... When when you're an ex addict, brother, and now I see it, it's like you struggle with always having that that taste, that whatever, and mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to work through. And for me, that's been through that suicide and depression hospital, brother. There is no cure, there is no fix, there is no methadone, there is nothing to kind of go with. You could talk, you could do whatever, brother, but there really is. So to say, if I've ever been like somebody that that's like like you said about an addict like that. It may not be drugs, brother, but it's always something that's always sticking with me because it yeah. just takes one little thing to trigger me, just like addicts do. Same thing, bro, to be like, oh, man, maybe, maybe I don't belong in this world. Maybe whatever. Yeah. It's the triggers, you know what I mean? No, you're absolutely right, and I think it's very important for people to understand that, too. I mean, it, if you look at you know people that are in addiction and active addiction, right? I mean, a lot of the times, the reason why there's therapists here and people here is because a lot of the times it's tied to emotional abuse, any type of abuse from childhood, a a lot of things that that we experience in life, right? And when we don't know how to cope with certain emotions, the only way that we find to be able to make things feel better is to escape from them, which is, you know, using substances. But, you know, you told me a little bit about your past. We're going to talk about that too. But I really do feel like, you know, your past is just as traumatic as everyone else's. Oh, thank brother, thank God, so though, you never, you know, you never touched anything like that. Because then that's just adding to adding to it. You it know, it adds what I'm to it, brother. You know what I mean? And that's what I, you know, growing up, you know what I mean? I grew up an old school dude. I'm from New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's what's up. And growing up with that Hispanic thing, like, uh, you know, everybody in your family said, you ever go to jail, I'm not taking you out. 
whatever situation that you get get into, you have no way but to whatever. Yeah. So not only that, but I mean, if I were to choose to be an addict, man, I, I'm going to be on my own. Yeah. My family already told me, whatever you do, you're out on your own. So that's what a lot of times that I, I, I look around the hood, see my big homie, you know, heroin doubt. Back in the 90s when I grew up, you see them all, you know, smoking crack and all that. And I used to sell here and there. But what really, what made me different, man, is when I was started selling, I would sell to my mom's friends that oh, I grew shit. up with. Okay. And, and you see people, you know, people that kind of like raised you and they're over here trying to sell their EBT, man. They're trying to sell their own shoes off their own feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you just give up everything and all that. You know what I mean? And I was like. Yeah, you know what? I don't think this is the thing for me, brother. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's, it's taken away from my community that I always say, oh, I'm down for whatever. But am I? If I'm hurting my own people and trying to get my own people strung out, yeah. I'm not. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I feel you, bro. And, and what, when you think back at it, like when it comes to, like you said, the suicidal ideations, thinking like that, you said you were actually admitted into a hospital? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because really? I, I, dealt, I dealt with a lot of, uh, of, of issues, you know? Typical teenage, you know, like in 90s, high school, I grew up with everything like that, you know what I mean? How old are you, homie, if you don't mind me asking? 49. 49, okay, so you were there around, yeah, because that's a pivotal time, dog. Mid-90s, music, homie, you music know what I mean? was so yeah, influential, everything, dog. bro. 80s to the 90s and gangster everything, rap. Everything, homie, and, all, all day and all that. So the influences that you had, you see, yeah. and all that, you know what I mean? And, and growing up as a little pobre kid, homie, I didn't have much. I didn't have what everybody else had, you know what I mean? So... It kind of put a lot of things in your in your own head because you, you you see kids nowadays, man. If they don't have the new Jordans, you know they get picked on. If they don't have the new what it called, they get picked on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not because it's them as an individual, but it, it, you you have a different standard of how you grown up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's real. And a, and a lot of times that you grow up, man, it, you're being a typical teen. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of parents don't understand is when they see kids like now, oh my kid's bad, my kid's whatever. Well, they're not. They're being a typical teenager. And you as a parent or anything like that, I know that we go through life and as a parents, we make a lot of mistakes, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, oh, is man. take accountability for it. Hey, I haven't been the best parent, but I just want to let you know. Because if you don't have this direct communication with your child, then you're not going to have a legit relationship. Because you as a, as a parent are never taking accountability for, for your 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 action of why your kids. Understand, people, we don't do things just because we do it, homie. There's always a reason. You go to a restaurant, what do you go for? To eat, homie. Yeah. You go to the restroom because you need to use the restroom. Yeah. There's always a, a reason. Yeah. So that's what I would try to explain, express to my mom and everybody else. I'm not a bad kid. I may grow up ADD or whatever, but you're not understanding. I have cut my wrist in front of you and you ignore me. I've told a lot of people, like, I just want to kill myself. You guys downplay it. Well, I was never downplaying it, brother. I was trying to tell you guys what I wasn't. If I really wanted to kill myself, we all know how to kill ourselves, bro. Yeah. It's not. It's not hard. Yeah. But if you see me or or, or teenager in general that are trying and, and and doing certain things like that and they haven't done it, what we're doing for you, brother, is we're crying for help for you. Yeah. We're asking for some kind of help that we're not even understanding our own mind. Yeah. But if you're not, if you're keep on telling us you're a bad kid, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. Well, then you're going to make us believe that we're bad people when we're not. Man, it's so hard, bro. It's so hard being a parent. You know, I, I have been a little bit transparent and vulnerable here. You know, I have a 11, a 12-year-old baby girl who's, man, she acts like she's 35 already. Oh, yeah. Then, it starts around there. You know, and then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I got my, my little boy who's 11 or 10 years old, you know, and it just, uh, it's crazy because I don't know if it's necessarily just a culture thing. You know, but I feel like, especially like in the Chicano households, bro, like because of who our grandparents were and because very, of, you know what I mean? It's yes. just very much like, I don't know how else to say it other than man the, man the fuck up pretty much and just handle your business and make sure you're doing this and don't be lazy. You need to be out here working. You need and, to that's, this and, that. and that's the, 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 what you're saying, homie. But the thing is, is like what a lot of people don't understand is to certain people, that's good. But a lot of people, it's detrimental, homie. Yeah. Because you think about it now, and you think back about the good smacks that you cry, God, or, yeah. you know, like you said, man it up, suck it up, whatever. Well, by you telling us that, then you're telling us to never show our emotions. We're yeah. never willing to express our feelings of how it was. Just because that's how you were raised doesn't mean that it's beneficial to me of that's the same with you. It's not. You know no, what I mean? You're absolutely real. And I think it makes it... I don't know if it's necessarily harder. Maybe it is. The fact that the internet and cell phones and all this type of stuff exists too, because 
it's it's just the the dynamic. I feel like in children has changed completely too. Well, you're not like, you're you're not living like 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 how you're supposed to your own life, man. Because yeah. nowadays we have so many people on TV. Why do you think the Kardashians have lasted twenty years? That's because we like the misery, homie. We like to see the 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 stuff go wrong and whatever. You know what I mean? Living I could, vicariously. I, I could ask people. you about your whole family, homie, and you kind of know. But if you if you're a true Kardashian fan and you ask them about that, oh, you know everybody, Kim, <laughs> Chloe. You know what I mean? Yeah, because me. you like the 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 the. The, the craziness you know what yeah I mean? it's crazy it's so true dude it's so true man and and yeah it's it's a, one of those things too where it's like I, I stay in prayer all the time like god i'm sorry i hope i'm not causing damage to my kids you know what i mean and i think it's it's hard but i'm grateful like when i do get on their ass for something that i'm able to kind of acknowledge like yo maybe i shouldn't have approached it like that and try and change it right because I, I think that's a very hard it's a very thin line where you have that tough love where you're teaching them the right yes. way. And then when you're being like, all right, bro, I can hear my thought that coming out yeah, of yeah. shit right now, you know? And that's when it triggers you into be like, ah, maybe that wasn't so beneficial to you. Yeah. And it was to me. And, and, and we, we get stuck in that, that whole thing of, well, that's why I was raised. Yeah. Well, that's how I was raised. Okay. Well then stop by Paulo. slow, pump the brakes. Yeah. Are you legit mentally, emotionally for how you were raised? Or do you have issues? Well, you know what I do. Well, then obviously that wasn't beneficial to you, homie. That's so real. how are you going to put that generational curse on your child by thinking it was okay for how you were raised that it's okay for them? It's not. You know what I mean? It's oh, not. Oh, man. Generational curses, bro. You hit Generational that, curse. You homie. hit that right on the... We, we talk about that all the time, bro. These generational curses. You know, going back a little bit to your past, bro, like, you know, building up to what ended up happening when you were a little bit older with the suicidal right, ideas right, right, right. things like that. I'm, I'm curious to know, you said you were born in New Mexico. Yes, right? sir. Did, did you have both of your parents growing up? I had them both, but my, my, my mom and dad, they divorced when I was two years old. Okay. Because my dad is an alcoholic. You know, my dad, God rest his soul, passed okay. away three years ago and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I man. appreciate it, man. Thank you. So through that, through that whole year, you know what I mean? Through that whole, since I was two years old, it's almost like 47 years, brother. Trust me. I'd be like, hey, dad, man, like if you love me, will you stop? Hey, you know, dad, blah, blah, blah. But it never happened. So it took me a long time to understand, like, that's your vice. If you yeah. can choose like your own drugs, alcohol, whatever over your child, then there's really something that's holding you back from that. Because my child, man, and that's why I am how I am, because my daughter, bro, she saved me. If yeah. it wasn't for my daughter being born, homie, my life would have been ended a long time ago, either in the streets or by myself. You know, like, you know what I mean? Wow. Wow, man. That's interesting. And did you have um, any siblings or were you an only child? I had a... Uh, Brother that was, we're nine years apart, but he didn't come to later on. You know what I mean? So, so different dad, completely different, different dad. And okay. that's probably like where I would say kind of sort of where my, my depression and suicide came in. You know what I mean? Because yeah, absolutely. When my stepdad came in, homie, you know what I mean? It was, you know, they all had the same last name. My brother, my mom, my stepdad, because whatever. Yeah. Well, that was the only one stuck out, Escobar. So I didn't fit. I, didn't, I feel like I didn't fit into the whole dynamics of what their family was, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and and how was the dynamic with with your stepdad? Was he a good like stepdad? Did he love? He was a good dad, homie. That I mean, yeah. I, you you know anybody that gets a step parent, homie, they're like, oh, I don't like you, whatever. But yeah. at the end of the day, what do you not like him about? You know what I mean? Because yeah. now that they're not together, hey, homie, I'm gonna tell you like you were the best stepdad that I could ever ask for, homie, in every yeah. which way. That's just how the And and my mom, I felt like was always the one that kind of messed that up, brother. You know what I mean? Because. You know, and you may you may know, you may not know, but you see anybody that gets in a new relationship, they cut off the world and they cut off everybody. Oh, yeah. That person is their everything. Yeah. And that's how I felt that my mom did. Yeah. And that's why growing up, you know, I had those issues. Even though a lot of people, you know, they go and say, oh, you know, this chick has daddy issues with daddy issues. Hey, don't forget us men. We have mommy issues. Yeah. That's real. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's real. Growing up, that's what I had. Those abandonment issues. Those like you chose him over me and. And I had a lot of that. But the thing is, is growing up, how you said with that old school Hispanic, my mom was never willing to like take accountability and never really to 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 listen. Yeah. Hey, mom, like I'm not doing all this just because. And if you try to downplay it, you're kind of like telling me like, I really don't give a shit about your feelings. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't care. The old schoolness comes, suck it up, do what you got to do. Well, I, I have, you know what I mean? But you're still missing out on the point that I still need you with that, that, coddling you know what i mean like yeah. i need you as my mother i don't need you to be the mom and the dad you know what yeah. i mean which i have a dad and he, he's like he's legit he's an alcoholic but in the same sense too i still have a dad you know what i mean yeah 
Man, and, and do you feel like when you said like generational curses, going back, even looking at how your mom was raised, you know, when you look back at like your grandparents, do you think that maybe that was like a trait she picked up because of how Big she time. was raised? Big See, time. Big time, Isn't that brother. interesting though how Big it time. just goes, it's just like a, it's like a snowball. Because right? I had that conversation with her and, you know, we, we, we had, you know, uh, uh, conversations about, you know, how she grew up with the same way this, that, or the other. And I'm like, okay, I get it. But mom, like how, how you were raised, that that's it's not beneficial to me. Yeah. I understand that hard love and I am who I am, but in the same sense too, just cause I'm a man doesn't mean I don't got emotions. Yeah, doesn't mean I don't right. got feelings. Mm -hmm. And by you trying to tell me to shut those down and that's it and suck it up and move on. Well then at what point do you think that I'm going to express these feelings? Yeah. that's You know real. what I mean? Do you have any boys? Uh, just a daughter. Just a daughter. Well, I was telling my wife this, I think it's really interesting, bro. Like, you know, most men that you grow up with as a guy, right? That I think the biggest defense that we do, we put on that tough shit. Yeah, that yeah, for. yeah, homie. But having one son and a daughter, I truly feel now in my heart, bro, that men are more sensitive than women. Oh, I, big time. I, I really feel that way because, I mean, if you look at like... You know, you look at like cats and dogs, right? They always compare them to like men and women because the dogs are like the boys. They always want yeah, to yeah, love yeah. and the cats are like, eh, you know what I mean? And and it's so true. I feel like my son is super sensitive and, and, and I see that and I start thinking about things even differently now when I look at certain people, especially men that have all of these insecurities and stuff. It's like as it was somebody at one point in their life that was just not coddled and loved the way that yeah. they needed to be loved. You know what I mean? They're, they're told to suppress those emotions. Whereas my daughter is so strong mentally. Like, of course she loves the the love from her dad or whatever, but mentally, man, she's a brick. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. I feel like, like boys are just more sensitive and that's, and that's like an epiphany I've had recently. Well, but, but you see it yourself and all that, you yeah. know what I mean? But the, the thing is, is like we were grown and even the older generation was like, you can't show emotions. Yeah. You're, you're not supposed to, you know, this, that, and the other. What well, says who? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's real. How, how are you trying to make us into somebody that God made us who we are? God made us with emotions. God uh -huh. made us with the feelings. And by you trying to shut that down, I mean, then you wonder why there's so many aggressive men out there because you, you don't want us to show no, nothing like that. Because if we do show emotions, then all of a sudden we're weak. We're not man enough. Well, why? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're, we're human beings at the end of the day. That's real. We're not robots. You know what I mean? That's so, real. You know, and, and going back to what you said, you said that you felt like a little bit of the abandonment issues from your mom. And also, I'm sure at the same time from your dad because of the alcohol, picking the alcohol over oh, you everything, at that certain homie. time, you know. So was that kind of, do you feel like that was the root cause of everything? Was just that feeling of, of uh, not belonging and not feeling like that? You know that 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 feeling on the inside that you were craving from your from both every your all my life, homie. I'm 49, homie, and I still ha look for that and crave because I don't talk to my mom anymore. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you oh, know man. what I mean? Because we had like a little falling out, and it, it was for the fact like I'm already 40 some years old. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And we've had this conversation in the past, and and you still keep on trying to deny it. You still keep nah, it didn't happen. Well, I'm not making this up. Yeah. And all all I need you to do is one thing, a hey, mom. Take accountability. Say, you know what, Anthony? Mm. I, 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 I wasn't the best parent in the world. I did come up short as a parent. You know what I mean? And I apologize. That's all you needed to do. Right there and then, brother, our relationship can keep on. Yeah. But if you can't take accountability, especially nowadays, I can't mess with you, homie. Because everybody wants to make excuses for why they are, why they do what they do. But at the end of the day, God gave us free will. Yeah. So any choices that you make, homie, you're making on your own. You're not, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, well, the devil made me do it. Hey, homie, sometimes the devil's probably kicking back and not even knowing what you're talking about. Hey, homie, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm <laughs> yeah. over here just doing my own thing. Yeah. But sometimes he tells, just like just like in the Bible, when 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 the devil and Jesus are at the, the, the top mm -hmm. and he says, hey, you know what, Jesus, get on your knees and you worship me and you could have it all. Did Jesus take it? Mm -hmm. No. Why? Because his father gave him the the, the free will. To make his own choices, what he wants and what he doesn't want. You can put something in front of somebody's eyes, but it's up to you to make that choice, brother. You know That's what I mean? There true. really is nothing in between. Why is it, bro, that our culture is so stubborn? Dog? Because we don't want to take accountability, brother. Because when we take accountability, that shows that you're you're the one that's in the wrong. Homie, you know what I mean? Yeah. You you, you can't it, it, anything that I put in front of you, homie. I'm not putting the gun to your head. I'm not doing nothing to you. Yeah. It's you, like God gave you that free will to make that choice of what you wanted to. You know what I mean? That's real. Ain't nobody forcing you to do anything you don't want to do. Man, and 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 those words, I mean, hearing somebody talk about accountability and taking responsibility. I'm big on and, that. Big, big. You know, not being in, I learned all, all of these things being here at ARC, right? Like right, these right, are all right. things that I've learned here. But other than that, like, 
you know, I'm curious who, where did you get all of that wisdom from, bro? Like, did you study people or were you just, just homie? Like I said, I'm from the streets, homie. I look at everybody. I'm through shot. I see what they're about. Cause where I work at homie, I tell people it's a halfway house and people laugh like, ha, I'm like, I kid you not homie, because yeah. where I work at bro, they bring a drug, uh, uh, ex drug addicts. They bring dudes that just <clears throat> get out of the pin. They give everybody an opportunity, homie. And I tell everybody that comes and works with us, hey, homie, this place is the spot for you. You yeah. want a helping hand? You want a stepping stone to kind of help you to in life? This is it, homie. Yeah. But I'm telling you now, if you get fired from here, homie, you're the biggest F up because you cannot get fired from here, homie. You can't. They allow you. They know you do, do tiempo in jail, homie. They know that more than likely you're probably kicking drugs. They more than likely, they know. So if you literally cannot make it where I work at, homie, then you're not ready for for the real world, homie, because this is probably the babiest that they can give you, homie, yeah, they give to me. help you. You know what I mean? Wow. Wow. And and uh, for anybody, you know, who's listening, because we do have a lot of people that have been, you know, locked up and they're in recovery now. Wh where would they go to sign up if they wanted to go work over there? Hey, homie, you go to Spellman, brother. It's right there. It's called Spellman Hardwoods on 43rd and almost like mm, Camelback. Homie, we've eat. Oh, that's in Phoenix? Yeah, in Phoenix. Oh, homie. okay. Damn, you came down from Phoenix today? Yeah, that? yeah, big dog. Thank, Thank you, homie. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, brother. Such, I was excited, homie. I was already here like an hour, two hours hey, early, homie. Hey, that's what's up. I hey, appreciate it. I don't it. like being late, dog. You know <laughs> what I mean? In yeah. any which way. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, man, any of you guys are listening out there, you know, I got to stop hit. If any of you guys are listening out there, you know, I know it's hard to get a job, especially with felonies and things like that. Make sure you guys check it out. And say no it lie. Again. One more no time. No lie. Spellman Hardwoods. Spellman Hardwoods. There you go, man. That's They're it. always looking for people, homie, like for real. And, and they give you a chance. And, and how I'll even say that they give you an opportunity, homie, is that we brought in a homeless off of the street wow. that was sleeping in our front, homie. Wow. That's and crazy. they asked him, hey, you want a job? And he's like, yeah. And he was working good. But then that's where, again, where where the mental illness came in. Uh huh. The, the, everybody thought that he was drugged up. And he's young, drugs, whatever. Nah, lo and behold, homie, he was really like a, a schizophrenic, bipolar, and all that. And that's why, like me, I reached out to him. I made him one of my good friends, homie. Like every so often, like every week, homie, I would come and give him a haircut. Kind of make him feel human again, homie. Yeah. Because if everybody's ignoring you and everyone like that, then you really there really is no thing for you to change. Yeah. Until somebody shows. Like this place where you're at, homie, when I walked in, bro, I felt comforted, homie. Because you have all the right words. You have the right people in here blessings you know kind of like a life is what you make it and believe in yourself yeah that's what people not only as addicts homie but people like me the suicide depression that's all we need homie i don't need you to tell me anything and everything about this that or the other i know what's wrong with me i know what's going on all i need for you homie is people like me with suicide depression is just listen 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 and listen that's it that's, that's it. all we ever ask for homie is just listen wow man no that, that's powerful bro you know and and um Going back to, you know, when you were younger and stuff like with schooling and things like that, did you did you ever were you a good student in school or did you graduate from high school and everything like that? By the skin of my teeth, homie, but I yeah? did it. The okay. diploma don't say nothing different. The diploma says I graduated. So that's, that's what I'm sticking that's with. That's all man. that matters, yeah. bro. Um, and were you were you involved like in the gang life and stuff like oh, that? Oh, yeah, all day. I mean, oh, I got okay. shot when I was 18. I oh, no shit. graduated high school, homie. That same night I went out, got shot. And wow. that's a, that's another testimony of the Lord, homie. I'm telling Ooh. you, getting shot. Wow. So you were so you, you know you 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 were never in addiction, but you definitely were a part of the lifestyle. That was my addiction, homie. Was the street life, really? You know what I mean? Life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, man. All right. Yeah, that was that was a crazy time, bro. And so you ended up graduating. You by the skin of your teeth, like you said. Doesn't matter. I failed eighth yeah, grade, yeah, yeah, and yeah, twelfth grade. Yeah, and yeah. I still graduated. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> um. Were you like a little peleonero, always fighting shit like that back then too? It was more my attitude, homie. You know what I mean? It was yeah. more like, you know, and, and it's still like a curse, homie. It's like, I don't like people to tell me what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's not just for me, but with everybody. Yeah. But it was more so because I grew up with ADD, homie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So uh, before you figure early 90s, I mean, early 80s, late 80s, early 90s, ADD was just like common to everybody. Just how you look now of everybody that has anxiety. Same thing, but there's a yeah. deeper thing with it. You know what I mean? Understand, like, I wasn't being a bad kid. I needed you to figure out that I had ADD, that I wasn't making these choices. I wasn't flipping out in school just because. Yeah. But, it all, but it all comes together. At home, school, 
girlfriend, trying to fit in. Yep. There's so much things as a teenager, and that's why my heart goes out to a lot of teenagers now because a lot of them don't know where they fit in. That's real. And then I think, you know, thinking back as a young man influenced by this culture, your dad's not around, your mom's probably working all the time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Totally. And then you're getting thrown into an environment where they're telling you to just do your homework and you're going to go to college. And yeah. Especially if you've never seen anybody do that in your life. It's not even like, not even, it doesn't especially even Especially coming from the hood, homie. I mean, yeah. who, who have you ever seen that that's ever gone like to college and that's real. whatever? And not to say that can never happen, but I mean, if you don't have no example and nobody trying to push you to do it, mm. I mean, the biggest thing is graduate. That's all I ever heard. Yeah, I never heard nothing about college. I never heard nothing else about, you know, making your, your education, go, make it go farther and do better. It was like, you graduate, cool. Hey, you live in the hood and you got a four-bedroom house, I mean, a one-bedroom house, hey, you're good. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You want to drive a bucket, it's okay. There was never nothing to say, you could have a brand new house. Yeah. You could have a new vehicle. You could be something in life. It was just the the, the minimum. Yeah. You got a house, you got a car, you're good. Man, and, and around that time, were you already feeling those feelings of depression and stuff, or did that not come till later? Uh, it, mid mid high school, homie. You know what I mean? Mid because yet school. again, you just figure out that you're trying to like fit in. What group do I fit in? Who I mean, what what, what kind of girls do I like? What, what what do I this? I mean, you're you're trying to figure yourself out. You know what I mean? Becoming a man by yourself, trying to figure and it if out. If you have if you have no examples, homie, then you're you're kind of trying to raise you're raising yourself by yourself. Yeah, and I know you said ADD. I'm I'm just curious. Did you ever have any like legit diagnoses of like depression or anything like that? Were you ever on medications? Once I got into uh, the suicide depression hospital, when they finally kind of diagnosed me, they diagnosed me with, per se with some of that stuff. I would say mm, nine ninth grade. Oh, but damn, prior okay. to that, that's when they kind of snapped that what I had was ADD. Okay. It wasn't just because I was a travieso. There was a reason why I was acting out or doing what I was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus being at home, the whole dynamics, running in the streets, you know, being exposed to sex early, everything like that. You know, it's thrown at, at your, you know, your, your face. Yeah. Seeing somebody get stop, shot in front of you, somebody getting stabbed in front of you at a young age. You know what I mean? How do you take it in? How do you deal with that? Yeah, that's You know true. what I mean? It, 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 yeah, because especially witnessing death before you're even like a grown ass man and having to try and... and um compartmentalize all of those things that you're that you're experiencing you know what i mean and not having an outlet not having an outlet other than that street lifestyle that's i mean yeah i mean that, that, that that's your second family and that's why a lot of people i see why they choose that because it, it, it's kind of like a false persona per se because the people that take you in they care about you for that moment yeah but after that hey homie go do time go do 10 years i'm gonna t who's gonna be there for you bro Who's going to check out your family while you're doing time? So Who's going to send you money? No one's even writing you kites. It ain't going to happen, like homie. That. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I try to express to other people because I used to work at a church, homie, at the valet. Okay. And I used to have little gangsters come up and ask me like certain things like that. And I would tell them, hey, bro, like, it's all fun and games. Oh, it's fun, homie. But what you get caught up, homie? Then we'll see the waffles that called you. Hey, what's up, homie? What's up, brother? It's all good for maybe a few months or a year, whatever. Like, uh, But after that, it moves on. Like with anything. Life moves on with or without you. That's real. If you lose somebody, if you're an addict, if you lose your job, people only care for a while, homie. And after that, they move on, which is not a bad thing, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then some of those, some of the, you know, the people that I know, too, that were in that shit would get a lot of these younger kids to kind of do the dirt for them, yeah. you know what I mean? So they didn't get caught up, and then they get arrested. Ain't nobody writing them letters, shit. It's just like, they're just kind of like uh, disposable, you know what I mean? It's well, crazy. And, and, that's what, and that's what a lot of the youngsters don't understand, you know? You're, you're being used, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's one thing that I that I grew up with and, and understanding that I never followed that. That one thing I never was, bro, was I was never a follower, homie. Yeah. I always led the role of whatever. If I ever did any dirt, homie, I did it on my own because I knew if I take anybody with me, homie, I've seen the the show, the first forty eight, homie. People are dropping dime for a Klondike bar, homie. No you know shit, what I mean? So real. much less anything else, bro. They're gonna drop dime on you in any which way. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. So, all right, man. So, uh, you know, did you have any types of healthy relationships when you were around my that grandma, age? Grandma, dog. My Just grandma, your nana. My grandma was my everything, homie. God even, rest my nana soul, bro. My, and mine's también both of them. You yeah. know what I mean? Because as a grandparent, now that I'm a grandparent, my my ten year old grandchild. I understand. It's a whole different love, homie. It's a wow. whole different loving. It's a whole different, like, okay, you know, you, you messed up me, home, but in the same sense, too, I'm just going to show you love. Because when you were sometimes with your parents and you mess up, bro, you got a good smack, you go to your room, and that's it. Yeah. There's really no explaining of, you know, what the end of the day, me, home, you got to understand is, you know, you messed up and I had to spank you, but understand I still love you. Charlie, we didn't get none of that. Yeah. Whatever you got, you, you got, you want to cry? I'll give you a reason to cry. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, well, what? No. 
So your nana was 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 your matriarch. She was the oh, one that just held to the, the bitter down. end, homie. You know what I mean? And I even had like when my, when my grandma passed away, homie. I even had a lady, you know, when she was doing like her whole prayer and all that, and she told me, you know what, like something about you, I just can't get it. She's all, but you were your grandma's, you know, favorite. You know what I mean? Because I was kind of like with the, the the oldest or whatever. Yeah. It's because you know, a little chavalito. If you don't have anybody else to turn to, homie, it's always grandma that you turn to, dog. And that was always my my safe zone, homie, all the time. Do you have a lot of theos and theas? Like, was uh, your everywhere. Yeah. But I mean, they're they're a lot older than me, homie. So they kind of did their own thing, whatever. I mean, here and there. Hey, I, I don't I don't hold it against you. You got your life going on, or whatever. But but did you guys have like a, like when your nana and your tata were alive and so you guys had like family get together? Oh, you homie, you have no clue, brother. On my yeah. mom and dad's side, my mom's times, side. Huh? My dad's side, you could you can give me a, a paper clip, brother, and I was happy because it wasn't about the gift, homie. It was about everybody being yeah. there. So you know such what I mean? Special times. Bro. Oh, homie, and that's what kind of like you know gets me sad, homie, because the older generation, as the like you said, the the grandmas and all that, mm-hmm. once they pass away, homie, that's the glue. Yeah, that's it. Bro. After that, it's it's the the generation doesn't carry on like that. Oh, you try man. hard, but it nobody yeah. else follows lead. Yeah, that's so true, bro. That's crazy. So. All right, man. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of similarities in your story, too, man. And, um, you know, what what ended up happening, what, let, take me back to that time when you ended up in that hospital, bro. What was going on around that time and, and, and what happened? Oh, man, this one day, like we a typical teen, homie, I was going through my, my whole thing or whatever like that. And, and there was one time that I came up to my mom having a bad day like and I cut my wrist and boom, boom, boom. And I'm bleeding, homie. Oh, wow. I'm bleeding. And I'm telling my mom, like. No, 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 no. And she, thinking that she's going to give me that motherly love, homie, she told me, don't let the blood get on my couch. Go clean that up and go to your room. Wow. Uh, or, 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 wow, really? Like like, like that? She's like, tough, man. Like knowing that I'm, that I'm bleeding and, I, and that I'm cutting myself? What I learned. So all that process, homie, I, I went back and forth to my mom, my dad. I went to three different high schools, homie. Okay. Because of all that, of this, that, going to my mom's and going back to my dad's and back to my mom's, back to my dad's, back to my aunt's, back to my dad's. So you see where the abandonment issue comes in, homie. I grew up like, does anybody like not want me? Why does everybody keep on throwing me around? Like, does, does, am I not worth anybody to call me their own? You know what I mean? That's tough. So getting thrown around and and having those kind of issues of, of yet again, like I told you, trying to fit in at school, girlfriends my own issues of going up of this that and the other so there was a lot on my plate homie and that's why like i tell you like my heart goes out to the younger youth because it's hard yeah it's very hard to try to fit into this world of where you think that you feel comfortable man and then you know i i've brought this analogy up before i don't know how you feel about it but like you know i love gardening that's one of the things that i enjoy doing but i know a lot about plants and i know that if you constantly uproot a plant and move it to different pots it it windles it doesn't grow to its full potential yes and all i keep hearing is that you never had a steady place to be so I'm, i'm guessing you never had real like best friends real homies like people from the school you maybe had them and then in different school it always had happens. them in the different school. yeah 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 because i went to you know uh, uh, one high school then i went to go live with my cousin and then we got into all kinds of shit at that school wow. so we went to a different school or we got in shit at that school so we back sent us back to the other school so then my aunt and them you know kind of made like a whole excuse per se oh we can't take care of you no more and i like cool it's not my first rodeo. My mom and dad have been throwing me around for years. Yeah. So by you throwing me back to my dad, no big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I ended up back over there and through that whole process, graduated high school. But before that, that's when I ended up in the hospital and all that. Who who uh, who called the the police and get you got you into the hospital? Uh, me and my mom, homie. There there was a a, a a a wall that I kept on hitting, and I was like, I just really can't, I can't get past this. You know what I mean? Of, of keep on hitting this, that, and the other. But then getting into to that hospital, that was another eye-opener, homie. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people may hear it from the outside looking in about these suicide and depression hospitals, about, you know, is there really padded rooms? Is there really, like, straps on the bed? All that's real. Yeah. That's all real, homie. That That's not just fake to think, like, oh, you see on Chichin and Chong and the Vato, Chong yeah. is in the room, whatever. That's real, homie. Yeah. That's real, real. And it, w- it was a conversation. I'm trying to get this point because I'm I'm a little bit confused. It was a conversation between you and your mom. Like, did she just decide maybe this was the best option for you? Pretty or- much. Yeah. Okay. Pretty right. much. You know what <sighs> I mean? Because you know, like every other parent, when you're at your wit's end and thinking that your child's bad, then what you you have to turn to something, somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man. And so that first experience in that mental hospital, bro. I I know. 
I struggled. Like I said, I've I worked in one for a long time. Right, right. And, and I always had struggled because I always felt like a bit of an outsider working there because I could kind of see its faults, right? When in a behavioral hospital, you had addiction mixed with psychosis, mixed with multiple personality disorders, mixed with all sprinkled all kinds of different stuff there, right? So for someone like yourself, a young kid who there's really nothing wrong with other right, than the right. fact that, you know, emotionally and spiritually you're malnourished, you know, that's you're not it. getting what you that's need. It. Being put into a facility like that and seeing all of these crazy ass people, it kind of makes you feel like that's part of your identity. Was that something that you struggled with? At first I did, homie. And not yeah. not until uh I'll tell you a story, you know what I mean? When when I first got there, brother, you know what I mean? It was kind of new and we know a lot of kids got there. One, you know, OD'd on his uh medication, oh, tried shit. to take out his whole family with the butcher knife. Ooh. You had another homie that tried, you know, uh uh his family would always lock the doors in there their house and all that because you know he would trip out and all that a lot of different scenarios and all that man you know what i mean so when i finally got there and we would have like group meetings they when i was there long enough they kind of told me you know we all have talked together and they told me like anthony like you don't like belong here like you don't have the issues that we have you know what i mean we're looking up to you as as a role model of that there is like a way out and I'm like, well, I feel like I have issues. They're like, no, no, let, let, let us tell you about our issues and what we've gone through. And what you have is nothing. Like you said, it's a basically like a malnourishment of attention and loving. Yeah. What they have is way deeper, man. And, 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 and that, that, that's what I would trip out on. And, and, and through it all, they had my back because we got like a little situation that we went to go eat uh, dinner. And, you know, they they give you, uh, like, a spoon, a fork, and a knife. Yeah. Well, it basically was spaghetti, homie, you know what I mean? So all I needed was basically, like, a fork. Yeah. So when I got in there, they had a substitute teacher, and at the end, you know, you got to turn all your stuff in. You know, Anthony, you know, where's your sport, your fork, a spoon, whatever? Oh, here you go. Here's my fork. Well, this lady, since she was a sub, she kind of, like, like, getting on me. Well, where's your knife, Anthony? I'm like, I don't get a knife. It's spaghetti. I don't need a knife. Well, where's your, you know, you took a knife. I, I, I didn't. So that kept on and kept on. So it triggered me, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when we went back to our room, uh, you you know, like you said, you worked there. Mm-hmm. Out of the whole room, there's nothing that you can probably do or, or or break or whatever to kind of take your life. You know what I mean? They're designed for you not to be able to. Well, this was a flaw, homie. So I found a a, a, a little cap over uh, the, the outlet. Okay. And I broke it. So it was sharp. So I started cutting myself and blah, 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 blah. Wow, man. Yeah, because I was like, you or anybody in my life never wants to believe me. And you're just another person that's basically telling me that I'm lying. Oh, you're lying, Anthony. You're not, you know, something's not wrong with you in the head. I've heard that in my life. Oh, you're lying. You're another person that's telling me to lie. And I'm not lying. I'm not. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had a big old, uh, out, uh, you know, outburst and all that and. I never thought that when they sedated you that that was real. That's real, homie. Yeah. They got me. They sedated me. Boom. And within 2.3 seconds, <sighs> I was out, out, homie. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So then they threw me in the padded room like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I found out that was real too, homie. You know what I mean? Yeah. They used to call those shots the B-52s. Spoles knock you out in 2.3 seconds, homie. That's and I didn't crazy. believe it. So I, I that whole thing like that, they left me in that room to kind of think about what was going on, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, whatever. So when the, the, the main dude came, he told me, he's like, Anthony, you know, can I ask you for a favor? I was like, what favor are you asking me, homie? I'm in a padded room. You it's know the client? You? No, no. It, yeah, it's the, the, the worker there. Oh, okay. So he told me, can I ask you a favor? I was like, yeah. He's all, but before I let you out of this room, like, you have a real big following. I was like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? So he gave me a letter and it was telling, you know, basically everybody that was in our whole unit, which is, it, it's a co-ed, but, you know, they have like division of the men and women. Yeah. So what it basically was telling me is like, we look up to you, Anthony. You have no business doing here. You have you have a way out of here. We don't. So basically, they were just kind of like being there for me and kind of, you know, acknowledging like I don't really have like issues of what they have and all that. So when I was walking back to my room, the the the, the worker told me, well, you know, you, I just let you know before you get there, like the, the whole place is messed up. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's all, when they, when this lady falsely accused you, all the people in your whole little thing like that, they all came together and they like rioted. They messed up the whole place. And I, I, I didn't think that I had that kind of pull and all that. You know what I mean? Wow, man. But all in all is when I finally talked to him and I kind of told him, you know what I mean? Use me as an example. 
I understand that you guys have issues and, you know, so, so do I like that. But if you can look at me as an example and understand that if you can control it about certain things in life like that, you can make your way out of it. But if you keep on putting yourself in this predicament and, and, and acting out, then of course they're going to keep on thinking that you're crazy, homie. Like, of course yeah. they are. You know what I mean? Man, and, and that was that was an epiphany you had in the groups, or was that just like a god a god shot type of an epiphany? Hey, homie, everything that's ever been thrown at me, homie, has been always been God, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? Because there is Amen. there is a wing. Because Amen. even like when I got shot, how that past of living in that suicide depression hospital and and growing up and trying to take my own life, I'll fast forward. When I got shot, homie, that was after. Yeah, yeah. Damn. It okay. was a year after. Wow. But. The manifestation of what I did for me to get shot, it's real. Because even since middle school, I was always telling my homie, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to get shot when I graduate high school. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to get shot when I when, when I graduate high school. And sure enough, I did. You know what I mean? Man. But even being in the hospital, when I got shot, when I was on that operating uh, room, I, I think I died for a minute, homie. You know what I mean? Because I remember waking up and I hear the guy next to me yelling, it hurts, blah, blah, blah. But that that split moment, homie, God told me, out of all these years that you've always gone to this suicide depression hospital and you're thinking that you're the man to always think that you control your life, he's all, this is your first opportunity, he told me. You want to live, then fight for your life. And if you don't want to live, I'm waiting for you. Hey, homie, I'm still here. Was that a dream or something? No, 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 no. Just like, just homie, like God was talking to me. God was heart. right there and then, Bro. homie. You know what's crazy? Uh, I got the chills under this sweater, dog. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, a lot of people talk about manifestation, right? I remember the situations in my life where I got scolded for thinking certain things, but I, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in that. I, I like, I really do feel like maybe that was just, you know, we, we talk about what, how sometimes people wake up when they need to, and other times God puts you through certain things in your testimony, Amen. and He reaches out to you when the time is right. And to me, maybe that was kind of like a God-given thing for him showing you, like, hey, this is the moment. I'm going to wake your ass up. That, it was it. That's crazy. How many times had you gone to the hospital before that, like been in one of those facilities? One and only time, homie. The one and only me, time. Me, I'm not a hardhead, homie. I don't need to go through stuff a thousand times to finally oh, okay. learn. Hey, homie, you throw me one time. Hey, getting shot, dog, that's not comfortable. So, yeah. all right. So go, so going back to the, the, the facility, that was kind of, and, and you know, Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like that was kind of like one of the first times in your life that you had people behind you, like backing you. You felt that, you felt that sense of confidence in yourself for the first time. Like maybe I'm looking at shit wrong. Maybe well, the understanding, homie, wrong. because not not too many not too many people uh, understand the mindset of how a person like me is suicide and depression. Yeah. We're all wired different, homie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why certain of us we make certain decisions based off of our emotions and all that you know what i mean yeah and that's why with me growing up luckily how we always say about that little uh, uh, uh voice mm -hmm. i listen to that voice all the time homie and that's why i was wow. like nah because i knew what the, the 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 aftermath of any decision i was gonna make and i tell people if you're gonna make a certain decision in your life and you're cool with it hey do it but if you have to question yourself to think like mm, i might not then that's already telling you don't do it so that that situation planted a seed Oh, yeah. Man. Plus, growing up all my life, a Catholic. You know, I grew up with my grandma, Catholic, uh -huh. every Wednesday, every Saturday, what I live. But it wasn't more of a religion. It was more of like a, a, a cultural thing like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you can go back and you, as the, as the old, you know, Chris, uh, Catholics that I've asked, hey, well, read me a chapter out of the, you know, the Bible that we read. They can't. It's more it's more ritualistic versus there relationship. There you go, homie. Exactly. Relationship. Because the relationship is, it's like, it, it's like knowing... Like knowing you're my brother is one thing, but actually having the relationship with my brother is a completely different thing. Very. And my whole family, they, they turned their back on me, homie, because when I got with my wife, I I, I started going to Christian. Oh, man. And, and I would tell me, hey, let me ask you a question. If you go to McDonald's and you remember the old school furs buffet? Oh, yeah. Back in hey, the Hey, homie, day. which one are you going to to get fed more? So I'm going to furs, dog. All day. You know what I mean? And that's what, that's what I try to tell people, homie. You got to go where you're fed. And if you're not getting fed, homie, and you get a, a quarter pounder, a, a, a value meal and you're still not full off of that homie you need to go to first that's remember, you know what i mean remember hometown buffet the hometown though? buffet homie you know what i mean like that's it's crazy. any of those it's true you know what bro man that, that brings in such a good thing because it was the same for me i was an altar server growing up i did the catholic church and 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 it's so crazy because 
my wife is Catholic. Right, and right. I, and I'm Christian, so I kind of converted over. But we're both doing, and this is a completely separate separate subject. I'm not trying to take people off of the what we're talking nah, about. Ah, dog, here, but, it's, it, but, it blends in. But we, uh, my wife and I are both doing the Bible in the year. Right, right. And, uh, and, and that's one of the things that I've learned is she has this Catholic Bible in the year. I'm doing the Christian one. And I listen to both. You know, I've been listening to the Catholic one more, but that's one thing like I've really grown to appreciate is the the ritualistic part of what the Catholic Church represents. But the one part that I always tell my wife that I personally feel not to not to bag on any relationships because you believe in God. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. But I feel like the one thing that the Christian Church does different is the fact that it focuses on the relationship. So I said you mix the, the relationship with the ritualistic and you put it together. It just brings a whole different level of respect, at least for me personally, to see how things were done back then. You know what I mean? It's just, it's incredible. Well, it, it was a transition for me, homie, for yeah. the fact that when, when, when I was going to Catholic, orale, you know, sign of the cross, get on your knee, yeah. take the, 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 the bread and the wine and all that. Okay, homie. Yeah. But never was I ever getting in touch with them because you guys weren't talking about where I'm at in my life now. Yeah. And that's where I transitioned to Christian because now you're speaking and you're preaching about what's going on in the world now. Now I can relate because mm -hmm. I'm part of that world. Mm -hmm. When you're living in past tense of your, the Catholic and like you said, I'm not trying to bash anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now that I've gotten older, kind of more have like my own mind to think like, well, I, I, I we're, we're, we're not part of the Ninevites and all that. You know what I mean? Of, yeah. of, of all that back in the day, like Canaanites that. and the, the Canaanites Levites. And I, I, I can't the, relate to that yeah. right now. So how was that even coming into my life where I'm at now yeah. when I need God up above? So when I started going to Christian, I was like, Hey, I would tell my wife, did you tell him about me before I got here? Because homie's literally speaking to me. Yeah. And that's when I finally realized, you know what? God's talking through him to me. That's and you deep. are talking to me. You know what I mean? That's deep, man. And so when you got out of the hospital, you know, I know you said it was a year later that you got shot. Was there any drastic changes in between that time of that seed being planted to when your life changed? Like, were you making little differences or did you go right back to that same old behavior after no. you the hospital? The one thing is, it's like, you know, like, like I said, it's, it's almost like I, I really can't call myself like an ex person that's, you know, uh, I'm a recovery of, you know, of suicide and depression and, you know, I mean, whatever. There really is nothing. Like, like I said, homie, there, there's something that you never get rid of. Yeah. There's nothing just like all the addicts, true addicts out there that know that you always have that little taste of just like, ah, so oh, hard. just so like, hard, and that's the same thing with me, homie. Like a lot of things I try to like, you know, keep myself busy because I'm a cleaner, homie. I love to clean. Yeah. When I'm at home, bro, I'll bring out the Fabuloso, the Clorox, whatever, and I go off on the whole house and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's my like, chill my put some music on or sometimes i'll put the praise and worship and kind of just take it in on me because mm. that's my downtime me too bro. all of us are so on the hustle and bustle that we never take time for ourselves to kind of mentally homie mentally because if everybody like that's listening to this if you see how big the the, the mental illness and the mental everything has been nowadays it, it, it's bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. You look out on the streets of people that are all fat and all the heroin out, homie. You see a lot of them talking to themselves. You know what I mean? Some of it's the drugs, but most of it is just the mental health. Don't mean I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm the same way when it comes to like the cleaning thing. Like I need it for my mental health. But did, did you learn any types of skills, like coping skills when you were in there? Anything that was a little bit different than you had before you had gone in there initially? I would say yes, and I would say no, homie, for Both. the fact that it, it, it was beneficial going to that hospital, but then it, it wasn't because it was still new. It was barely open, like, for first year, really. Yeah. So it's not like they really counseled me into, yeah. like, being a different person and, and trying to deal with certain things like that. It was more so, okay, you know. How I looked at it, homie, basically, it was like a little vacation, bro, because yeah. it, it was still new. You really didn't have the people that really knew of how us as individuals and children were mentally, you just thought basically that we were bad kids and we just need to chill here for a while away from our parents so we can kind of reset. Well, that's that wasn't the thing. You know what I mean? Wow. That wasn't the, the fixing point of it. Okay. And and when you got out, how did the relationship change with your mom? Was it still pretty rocky, even up to the point where you got shot? Everything was kind of the same? Uh, everything was good, homie. It was nothing like that. You know what I mean? It wasn't until like when I got shot, and, you know, and a little bit after that, you know what I mean? You know, got into certain things of, you know, getting into my mom and be like, oh, man, I should have just died. And her saying, why well, you should have. Well, what, what, what do you mean? You know what I mean? I'm just expressing my, 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 my 
just oh i'm shot i have i have you know i have staples in my stomach i'm recovering from my back so you got to understand me mom i'm like a little aggravated but for you to come and tell me like well maybe you should have and a lot of things like wait wait, what do you mean yeah and yet again that's why i said triggers trigger again like oh shit here we go back into that whole point like if you really don't give a shit about me that i just got shot then nobody else is you know what i mean do you feel like that was a real emotion from your mom or do you feel like that was her defense to try and, and like in some weird way toughen you up or something like that? To a certain point, homie, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times, like I said, growing up with Hispanics, suck it up, you know what I mean? And, you know, you you want a reason to cry, I'll give you a reason to cry. And back then, you know, you look at it now, especially, you know, spanking. If you do that now, that's abuse, homie. You yeah. know what I mean? And to a certain point, if you look back at, at the things that, oh, I would just discipline you. I don't think so. I think you put a little bit more yeah. oomph behind that smack or, or whatever it is. Well, whatever you were mad about, yeah. you kind of took it out on me. You know what I mean? When 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 I I was just being a typical teen. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you look at me now, homie, I'm 49. I've never been to prison. I've never been to jail. I've never been to none of that, homie. You know what I mean? Because I remember growing up like that and knowing. I didn't want to let anybody down, homie. You, you as a Hispanic or even just in general, homie, you don't want to let anybody down, yeah. much less your parents. You know that's what I mean? We're, we're, we're like, we're like dogs, homie. And that's what I tell the people. We're like dogs. You can smack the crap out of your dog. You can kick it, whatever. But give it 10 seconds later, bro, and you tell them, hey, come here, baby. They're going to come right back to you, and they're going to love you, homie. Man. And and during during this whole time, bro, did you have any relationship with your biological father at all oh yeah yeah through the whole through the whole thing homie. the whole time it, 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 my mom and dad you know it was it was a good r- relationship per se except when my dad would get drunk you know what i mean okay then my dad would turn into a whole different person and i'm like well no, i'm out you know what i mean because yeah. this, this is not my dad and hearing that one thing that i would always trigger me and get me so mad is i would hate when my dad would have called me when he was drunk because oh, I hated that gibberish. Right here, bro. I'm you, right you with get you, me. dog. I, God, hated I hate it. That shit. I love you, Dad, but I don't. And what's up, man? What are you doing, man? Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> That's you triggering feel, me right You now, feel me, dog. homie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. I it got to the point. You know, I, I love my pops. I know he ain't listening to this, but I got to the point where I told him, I said, bro, you call me like that again, homie. There's a chance that you're not going to hear from me. He's like, me. I can't yes. do that shit. Yes. He's in the middle of working on our washing machine and he's come under, you know, oh, God, crazy stuff, bro. But, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people come in here and they talk about, you know, they hold a lot of grudges towards family members for things like divorces or separate, you know, the stuff that we experienced when we were kids. But there always comes this point where during their own trials and tribulations of their life, they have this epiphany where they no longer look at their parent as like an addict. They look at them like a human being and you kind of start seeing it differently. Like, oh, pobrecito, this person grew up and struggled. Did you ever have that moment? With my dad, with my dad, I did, homie, because yeah. prior to that, when I was younger in elementary school, homie, my, my dad got blown up by a bomb. Oh, wow. He was working at a, an apartment complex and he uh, he was covering for another maintenance guy. Well, when he went down to go pick up a box, you know, by the thing, like, I, well, lo and behold, it was a pipe bomb. And it blew him, like, from here to, pff, it blew him far, homie. It broke, I think it broke every bone in his body. How old were you? I was in elementary school, homie. I remember Damn. just walking from elementary school and seeing all kinds of cards at my grandma's. And when I got to my grandma's, I saw, you know, they they said my dad's name. And I was like, that's my dad's name. You know what I mean? And I still had no clue. Not until uh-huh. they snuck me into the hospital to see my dad. My dad was bandaged from head to toe. He had pipes coming, poses and everything coming out of every body. And you figure I was in elementary school, homie, a little chavalito. Imagine seeing that as a kid, your own dad all what the yeah you know what i mean and i feel like that kind of prolonged and pushed my dad to stay longer as an alcoholic yeah yeah because of all the pain and everything. not only that but i mean my dad got like a settlement every so often and my dad was a heart of gold homie but you know when he would get his money bro that was like a whole neighborhood barbecue yeah. on my on my dad's dime yeah which everybody else that used to use my dad and all that yeah and which i, I can never change who my dad was but the thing is i would tell him dad like you're buying their friendship. They're not your friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody wants to be your homie when you pull out a big old C note or a hundred bucks. Hey, what's up, homie? At the end of the day, you're my homie, but what are you putting in on this? Yeah, that's real, man. That's real. So, you know, you you experienced all of that. You went to the hospital. You came out. You got shot. You You went through all of that stuff. At what point in your life, you know, having that epiphany that God gave you in the hospital that you need to fight for your life, 
at what point in your life did things really, really, really start to change? Like, when did you feel God's presence around you a lot more? Was that when you met your wife? You know what it is. It, it is, and not only that, but people try to don't understand. Like, my wife is my best friend, homie. Like, That's tomorrow, cool, tomorrow is going to be thirty one years that we're together. Congratulations! I'm going to give you another round of applause yeah, for yeah, that, hey, man. Woo! I'll give my appreciation with that too, because it's never been easy. Shout out, shout out. What's her name? Shyla. Shyla. All right, there you go, my baby girl. You know what I mean? But ever like, then and the whole story with her is like, you know, she grew up. With the heroin addict dad, you know what I mean? A lot of her yeah. family, you know, heroin addicts or whatever it is like that. So she kind of woke, uh, uh, grew up broken as well. Yeah. Her dad passed away at 12, you know what I mean? And from the age of 12 on, most of her family, I guess she felt wasn't there for her to kind of pick her up for when her dad passed away and all that. Yeah. So by the time when she came 15 and I was 17 is when we met. Wow. And it was a craziness on me. I was with my girlfriend at the time, you know what I mean? And yeah. I try to be the Mac. Hey, what's up, home girl? You know, give me a kiss. She's like, Pfft, I don't even know you. <laughs> what I let? Well, give me your number. She's like, Pfft, give me your number. We're in Tres Flores and shit. All that, homie. <laughs> so right there and then, homie, right when she told me no about a kiss and she told me no about uh, uh, giving her number, that's when I knew I wanted to marry her right there and then, homie. Wow. That she was going to be my wife. Because growing up, you know, mid-90s, homie, you grew up with that whole player thing of, Orale, what's up, boom, boom. And yeah. I was a man or whatever. No big deal. So when she finally told me no, I was like, in all honesty, you're the first girl that kind of has ever told me no. Damn. Like, you put me in my place. You know what I mean? But that's what I needed, homie. I needed somebody to hold me accountable for my actions, hold me accountable for what I say and for what I do, because I've never been held accountable in none of my life. You know what I mean? So wh- how old were you when you guys started dating? It was 15, 16, around that time? I, I knew her prior to that. So I'm going to say she was around... <sighs> I would still call her from my girlfriend's house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was like, homegirl, like, you're the one. Yeah. Even though I'm here with my girlfriend, you're the one. You know what I mean? <laughs> so through all that, just we we just evolved, homie. And, and I knew she was my my everything, homie, is because when she got with me, bro, I, 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 I lived in a trailer. I didn't have a car. I had a bucket, homie. How old were you when you guys official? Uh, 1993... So yeah, on her, on her birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow's my wife's birthday, and wow. I asked her out on her birthday. Wow! So it's the best birthday present ever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there never you stops go. giving. You the know what I mean? That keeps on giving. How, yeah, yeah. how old were you? Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, good. So uh, right around that time when you were going through your struggles was around the time that God you, you blessed see? you. With, you know what I'm talking about? The exactly. great woman Only to help. Very you know? man. That's 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 awesome. That's awesome, and it's almost like it makes up for all of those lacks in personal relationships that you didn't have growing up, having somebody that's your ride or die that loves oh, you that much to the fullest friend. Shout out to my wife, Eva. We're, we're at 12 years right now. Amen. And, uh, you know, but we've, you know, we've, we've been through some hard times, bro. And I'm sure you and your, your lady have too. You, you don't know even I mean? know, homie, having to eat potatoes and, 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 and hamburger meat for a whole week, trying to stretch out 20 bucks. homie. you know what I mean? Yeah. My, 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 my wife didn't get for me for, for what I could offer her, homie. She knew that, I mean, materialistic wise. Yeah. She knew who I was as an individual and we both kind of snapped. You know what? You're the missing puzzle for, piece for me and I'm the missing puzzle piece for you. Wow. And that's what, you know, I try to tell a lot of people about, they're like, how do you, how do you, how have you guys been together so long? Because she helped me through the whole thing, even being suicide and depressed and, you know, this, that, and the other. And if it wasn't for her brother, like I wouldn't be where I'm at in my life in any which way. Wow. In the positive, you know what I mean? That's cool, man. And was it was it hard for you as a man to open up to her and tell her about those feelings initially when oh, you were big time feeling that way? big time but even for the sense of another reason why I knew she was it homie I didn't have to explain to her she saw everything for herself really? my side of how I was raised of how they were because I didn't see nothing wrong homie I would choose my mom over my wife all the time wow and 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 little did I know that I was disrespecting my wife yeah because at the end of the day who are you living with your wife yeah. Who is it that you go home to? Your wife. You know what I mean? When you got, when I got married, homie, did you forget that two become one? Well, now you're forgetting that, homie. And you're making, I was making my mom, my wife, my everything over my wife when I was disrespecting her. Yeah. And it wasn't until I finally put my foot down on my mom. And the weird way is, but I think my mom respected it. Yeah. Because she never had no issues about that again to finally, hey, you know, step up as a man to kind of protect your wife because you married her. Yeah. When when you when you said I do, you mean I do through 
goodness, through bad, through sickness and health, through whatever it is when she's being on her period and tripping out. Hey, homie, you still signed up for that. You yeah, know what I mean? It's not like you just walked into something like, I have no clue who she is. You know who she is yeah. to a point of who she is. You made her that way. You know what I mean? Wow. Such a beautiful blessing, man. I'm glad that you got that type of a relationship and you guys got your baby girl. You said that you're already a grandfather. Oh, homie, that be for the last 10 years, my baby boy's 10 years. So yeah, this is your this is your daughter's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And the exact same baby daddy, homie. She didn't have to go through that whole process of wow. messed up baby daddies of this, that, and the other. Nah, That's like, good, bro. Like another thing, like, man, like about manifestation, homie, like, from when my daughter was, when she first became pregnant, homie, you don't know how bad I've ever prayed to God. Just give me a boy. That's all I want is a boy. For the fact that I want to go back into my childhood life of getting to take my grandson to a basketball game. Yeah. Taking him fishing, being there for him. Homie, I'm my, my grandson's number one fan, homie, in any which way. like I, that's And cool. that's all I ever wanted. That's why I never played no sports. Why am I going to go play sports? Why am I going to do good in life, homie? When there was really nothing to give back to me to be like, good job, me, huh? Yeah. Never played sports. Nobody ever showed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was the point of getting A's, homie? When A, cool. Yeah. That's how you should. Yeah, that's crazy. What's the point of doing good, homie, if you're really going to have something good about it? You know what I mean? Oh, man. And And how, when it comes to marriage, you know, for people that may be struggling with similar situations, you know, suicidal ideations, whatever it may be, anxiety, depression. What do you feel one of the key elements is when it comes to being in, in a marriage that has helped your relationship get to that point that it is now with the best friend? Understanding, homie. Understanding and, and kind of just, you know, being there for that person. You know what I mean? You, you, I've been with you 30 years and through the whole process, you've known what I've gone through. You know what it is like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the, how me and my wife have worked together, brother, is that we're, the crazy thing is, and I tell people, homie, is never quit laughing with each other, homie. I could have the most stupidest jokes, homie, but my wife will still laugh at that. You know what I mean? <laughs> still shows that she loves you. But it's a communication and respect for each other. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you don't have no, I guess, kind of like understanding within each other, then you're looking at each other like enemies and all that. Yeah. As, 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 as. as Weirdness, because I, I would never call my wife my best friend if she wasn't understanding, if she wasn't like knowing what was wrong or, or whatever like that, because I, I know my wife like the back of my hand, homie, and she knows me like the back of her hand. Yep. And because she's my best friend, she's my everything and all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And without having somebody that understands you, then you figure you're going to be out and about by yourself. Yeah. And there's always somebody for everybody. I mean, you look at, you look at the streets right now, homie. You'll see Frank, the heroin addict, with Hen Henrietta, the heroin addict. I mean, there's somebody for everybody, bro. You know yeah, what I mean? that's real. That's real. No, that's cool. So there's no room for holding anything in. You got to be open and transparent about everything. Me and my wife, homie, we're, we're the most openest people in every which way. There's no secrets, no whatever, because I'll sometimes, you know, like how you do, you reach out to people like on Facebook or yeah. through Messenger and... I'll tell her, hey, you know, uh, Sarah, you know, hit me up. She was asking me a little bit of information about her her husband, whatever. And my wife would be like, well, why are you talking to other women? I said, okay, baby girl, let me ask you a question. How did you find out? She's like, well, you just told me right now. I told you. Yep. I'm not trying to hide no secrets from you. I'm yeah. telling you what the whole conversation is. I'm telling you what the whole thing is. So what's the, what's the point of lying? Why am I going to have to lie? And then I'm going to have to remember my lie later. Yeah, no, that's real. Let me just tell you straight up about what everything like that, you know, because you really can't, you know, shit on somebody for when they're telling you the truth. They, you know what I mean? Like, Heck yeah. take it for what it is. I'm, I'm not lying to you. You Heck know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man. That's what's up, dude. Openness, really. Openness with the relationship and marriage and everything like that. You know what I mean? Yep. Keep, I don't own her. You know what I mean? Keeping God at the at the top. Right. The, not even the top, homie, as your foundation, homie. You know Absolutely. what I mean? All around. Because if you try to stand on sand, homie, you're going to sink. Well, I always, I always think the reason why I say on top is I remember we went to this uh, to this wedding one time and it had like a triangle, right? And at the top, it had a cross. And at the two corners, it had uh, the husband and wife. And they said, like, the, the closer you get to God, right, the closer you get to each other. I always think Amen. about Amen. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. No, that's awesome. Shout out to her. You know, real quick, bro, for, for any, any young kid out there that may be experiencing the same type of stuff that you've been through. You know, maybe they didn't have a, some of their parents. Maybe they've dealt with extensive amounts of abuse. They're, you know, going different places. Maybe their family's in the military and they don't have a solid foundation. They're just going back and forth feeling like this world would be a better place without them feeling like they cannot 
go on anymore? Is there anything you can say, any type of words of encouragement that you could tell them to uplift their spirit? Is there anything? At the end of the day, homie, what everybody that's listening to this is what you got to understand is God put you on this world for a reason. Mm. God don't make mistakes, homie. God does not make mistakes, homie. You may have certain things that you kind of like question yourself about all that. But then again, you know, that's where the devil comes in to give you that false stuff that you're thinking like, oh, I'd be better if I wasn't this world or maybe my mom and dad, they would be better off without me. That's all lies, man. It's all lies. If you weren't supposed to be part of this world, God would have never had you be born. God wouldn't have you keep on surviving every day. Every day that you go through stuff, man, every day is a, 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 a life lesson, homie. And just like you, you can express to other people with the podcast you're having. That's my thing, homie. It is like I, how me and you met. It wasn't about like coincidence. It was meant to happen, homie. Amen. For the fact that you probably don't have too many people that are like me, homie, that are expressing and talking about suicide and depression. And this might just, might, might, might even save one person, homie. Like, yeah. like, you know, Jesus waited for that one lamb. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, ah, oh, forget it. Nah, that's with me, homie. If I could at least save one person from not taking their lives, because there is a way out. Don't don't ever let anybody lie to you thinking that the world will be better off without you. Don't even lie to yourself thinking that this world may not be beneficial to you. Because all my life and all the things that I thought nobody cared about me, homie, little did I know that they did. When I got shot, they had a security guard at my, at my hospital because so many people were showing up. I was lying to myself. You know what I mean? I thought that it, just because my past hurt and my past pain that I went through, it didn't mean that I had to dictate who I was going to be. Yeah. Just because everybody told me I wasn't going to amount to something, just because everybody told me that I wasn't nothing, just because everybody told me that, it took me a long time to believe it. No, I am somebody mm-hmm. and I am something that I could add to this world and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the thing is, you just got to lift yourself up. Go through what you're going to go through. That's life. Nobody said life was going to be easy. Yeah. And a lot of times that we grew up, you know what I mean? A lot of people never expressed that to us and tell us about that. That, you know, when, when you went to high school, did you ever have the thing to say, hey, you know, watch about your taxes and have a savings account? Exactly. Nope. How are you going to how are you going to be able to survive on stuff when nobody's ever given you the tools to survive? Nobody's ever told you about being mentally, you know, strong about, you know, suicide. Nobody ever taught you that. You know what I mean? You went to school and, and what do they tell you about sex? Wear a condom and you'll be fine. Yeah. Here's a volleyball. Throw it at each other. That's it, homie. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really like a, a thing, especially now, like in school like that. It's not taught like nothing more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So going through everything that I got, it, it was a tough life for me. I'm not going to say, oh, we, you know, it just took a magic pill or took somebody to talk to me that everything was good it's not it's a long process man you know what i mean yeah. but you got to understand that you're more more worth something in this world than you are dead you know what i mean because you try to take your life homie you're you're not just taking your life you're taking everybody else that was connected to you because when you're gone that hurt never heals yeah. you're you're dead you're dead so you don't feel none of it but by you taking your life man you leave a lot of hurt and a lot of pain behind Man, ladies and gentlemen, please get up out your seats and give it up to our homeboy, Palo, one more time. <laughs> homeboy Appreciate Anthony, that, bro, thank you so much, bro, for coming and, and sharing your testimony, dog. And it was an absolute pleasure, man, to call you a friend now. It's been, it's been great talking to you. Hey, my brother, I appreciate you for, for reaching out like that, man. You know what I mean? Like, this is something that I've always wanted to talk about because yeah. I've always, like, I always want to help, man. You know what I mean? If I survived it, it's basically coming from, like, you know, you say Afghanistan uh, war. When you come back, man, you have stories that you want to see to people. And not only that, but you can express, like, I'm a survivor of it. Yes. You know Absolutely, what I mean? Absolutely, man. No, that's a, it's, it's a blessing, man. And thank you again, Alex and Jamie, for making this possible. For all the ladies and gentlemen, everyone out there listening, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you guys want to be a part of the podcast, feel free to hit me up. All of the links will be in the show notes of this episode. If you guys got any positive words of affirmations you want me to give to my boy Anthony or whatever, I'll make sure that he gets them. You guys could write in, whatever it may be. But until next time, I hope you guys have a safe one out there. Much love. God bless. And we will definitely see you on the next one. Peace. God bless. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah.
What's going on, everybody? This is Buddha from the Rcast, and I just wanted to thank you for checking out this week's episode. It means a lot, and if you could share it with a friend or a loved one, somebody you need in recovery, or maybe somebody who just needs that little bit of extra positivity in their life, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you would like to join us here on the Rcast, either in the studio live or online, hit us up. The links are down in the show notes of this episode, and on there, you can find direct links to our main website here at America's Rehab Campus and all of our social media platforms. Follow us. We keep the posts positive and motivational, focused on recovery, health, and wellness. As you know, in this modern day and age, we need as much love as possible, y'all. And as always, if you or somebody you know is in need of substance abuse treatment, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're open 24 hours a day, and our direct phone number is 1-833-272-7342. Once again, that phone number is 1-833-272-7342. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Much love, and God bless. Peace.